Hey there, welcome. I'm Ingrid and today I am participating in a fun hop. We've got some really cool techniques. My good friend Justine Hovey, she just hit 50,000 subscribers on her channel. So we're hopping with some incredible talent today. Be sure to leave a comment along the way because she's giving away some very cool prizes and there's over 50 cards. You're gonna see some watercolor techniques and some very cool ways to make your cards pop. I am all about that. I love using product in unexpected ways. Stay tuned to the very end because because this video is jam packed. And if you love techniques, be sure to check out Justine's online class. The link is below, along with all the details about the amazing hop. So we're gonna jump right in and we're gonna create some stripes. I have a number eight black velvet silver brush and I love this brush. It's a little bit of, a little bit more of a higher price brush, but you wanna have good quality brushes. They hold water a lot better and they make watercolor painting so much easier. You can see here I'm just going back and forth across from edge to edge, adding a fair amount of pigment down. Initially, I actually uh, dipped my brush into some water and then into the pigment and to that pigmented wash that I have down. I don't have my wash watered down too much. I want to have a lot of color, and this is Translucent Orange by Schmincke. This is an artist level color. It is super translucent and, and the prettiest orange I've ever found. You can see here just going over it a second time and that was really because I noticed that I hadn't gone off the edge of the paper to the left. So we're going to do the same here. You can see I actually started on my project rather than off my project. And just at getting a little bit more water here, always dabbing my brush off onto a paper towel. And what that does is it helps remove just a little bit of water because you don't want to have too much water in your brush you need it's you need to find the right amount of water if you have too much water your pigment is going to bleed out if you don't have enough you're going to end up having a rough coating so you can see here this is the proper amount of water and pigment that you want on your brush in order to get a decent, you know, swath here because we're painting just some jagged stripes. I'm not trying to be perfect or anything like that. And you want to limit the amount of repeat times that you go into something that you paint because every time you're bringing in more water and that's going to cause your pigment to run a little bit. So now that we have our jagged stripes and I love them, I'm going to move on to a number two brush. And this right here is going to help me to paint some very thin blue lines. I'm using Paris Blue by Schmincke. This is truly one of my favorite blues to use. And you're going to paint a very, very thin line in between. You want to keep it away from the orange, but yet also maybe a little bit more to one side than the other. You want to keep your grip nice and loose, just like this. You don't want to be t holding it tight like that, nice and loose, because that will help you to actually create a straighter line, believe it or not. And, or even hold it a little bit more at the edge. Don't choke up on your paintbrush. When you have too much control is when you lose control. So just keep it nice and light. And if you find it's a little thick in one side, that's totally fine. You know, this is meant to be a loose, stripe pattern. It's not meant to be perfect. It's the imperfections that actually give it its character. So I'm adding a little bit more here to the edge and we have just a little block that we're going to cut up and create a, a happy birthday card with. And blue and orange are complementary colors. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. So they really pop next to each other. This is a great color combination for a masculine card or just any energetic happy card. And for some finishing touches, I went ahead and watercolored a scrap piece of paper and then die cut out an H and a B with this bold alphabet dies by Altenew. I love these dies. I've got that great little craft pick, tool pick by uh, Tonic Studios. It's an awesome, awesome tool to get those out. And look at that, very simple. I didn't wanna complicate it because I want the watercolor to be the star. Just simple spread out and using the same dimension that is on the top and the bottom for in between the panels as well. For our next project, we're just gonna talk about simple patterns here. This can really apply to any pattern that you want. Uh, I'm just gonna do some very simple polka dots. And the key with these kinds of fun, 
you know, vibrant backgrounds for birthday cards or any other type of cards is to really keep it simple. You want to allow your pattern to shine. You don't want to overcomplicate things. We're using Lemon Yellow by Schmenke, and this is a really bright, vibrant color. It's the Hortum Aquarelle line, so this is their artist line. And I'm also using the grids, the grid kind of on my glass medium mat to help me space out exactly where I want my dots. You can see that I do clean my brush off from time to time. I wanna make sure that I also have enough water when I'm pulling that pigment. The wash that I have down, it doesn't have a whole lot of water in it. It's mostly color. And I want this to be bright and vibrant because I'm going to pair it up with a complementary color, which is purple. So you can see here, just trying to get the maximum color that I can out of this without going too much back into those dots. I really kind of want to let them just stand on their own. Don't want them to bleed out in any way by adding excess water. You can see I'm speeding up parts of this as well. So now that we have our basic pattern down, it makes it easier to put in the purple. And I didn't want to go yellow, purple, yellow, because every time you do that, you risk the chance of contaminating a super light color like a yellow. So I have my Gonzai Tombi uh, set off to the left by Kurataki. And this is a great starter set if you aren't really into getting some artist quality watercolors like the Schmincke Hortum Aquarels, which, you know, they can run seven to $10 you know, for one of those little tiny half pans, whereas the entire set of 36, you know, I think I got for $38 off Amazon. You know, it's a very, but the, the colors are very different. I, I won't lie. The Hortum Aquarelle artist line is super, super translucent, amazing colors. But yet the one on the left, if you're just kind of getting into watercolor and going to do it for cards, it's a great set to have. So you can see here, I've got this really vibrant purple. Love these two paired next to each other. Again, they are compliments. And now that I have my pattern, you can see I have a lot of white on the edges. Wanted to make sure to take care of that too. So when you think of wrapping paper, your design doesn't end at the edge. You wanna make sure to have that flow go off the edge. I didn't tape this project down because I knew that my pattern was going to extend all the way to the edges. So what I encourage you to do is not force yourself to paint in an uncomfortable position. Flip your project around, you know, make it comfortable. If you're right-handed, flip it around so that you have that to your right and vice versa if you're left. It just will, you'll, you'll be very happy that you did because it's a much more relaxing experience. But not only that, your result will also reflect in that. Don't forget those corners as well, because that's an extension too. Now you've heard me say the words complementary colors a few times now. What complementary colors are is if you look at a color wheel, the way the colors are lined out, you have some main colors and opposites, purple and yellow, for instance, a primary is yellow. The complement to that is directly opposite on the wheel and that's purple. Another primary is blue and the complement to blue is orange. Another primary is red and the complement to that is green. These colors, they pop. So I know we were supposed to only do two, but I couldn't resist. This last one is for you, Justine. So here's what we're doing. I have a piece of, you know, watercolor paper and I'm just basically finding the middle point. And then from there, I wanna make sure that, I'm gonna put some candles down. So I wanna make sure they're evenly spaced. So I'm just gonna do a half inch, just make a little tiny dot and a pencil. And this is just gonna give me a starting point so that I'm evenly spaced-ish on my project. I'm gonna take some really bright, vibrant colors. I'm gonna start off with translucent orange. And I had to think this through because I wanted to kind of do Roy G. Biv if I could. So, but here's the thing, when you're making straight lines like this, you wanna not be tentative. Here's my first project. I was totally tentative, nervous. Yes, I get nervous. And look at how wonky and crooked that was. And sure, that would have been fine, but you know, I knew I could do better. So I decided, you know what, let me start again. Yes, that's even me. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to work kind of from the middle to the left and then the middle to the right. And I'm going to speed this up super quick. But first I want you to see here. Now I'm going into this uh, magenta right here and I really wasn't feeling the weight of the water. And that's why it took me a minute to get the actual pigment, the paint onto the actual paper uh, because I knew it wasn't right. I had to take some water off my brush. 
you know, I, you should notice those little things when you uh, when you watch me. I, that's why I leave that part of the screen in for you rather than just zooming into the project so you can get the biggest picture. That first one had a lot more water than the other two and you can see the difference in the actual uh, coloring. Now I wanted a really bright green. I didn't have it right there on my plate so I just reached off screen for that. This is sap green. I love sap green. Sap green is a great color and when I do basil leaves and things like that and a lot of foliage I love using this color. And then of course back to Paris blue. Can't not have Paris blue, right? I love that. But how fun are those five stripes? Totally simple, totally easy. But you know what? We need to jazz this up quite a bit because this is a little too simple for me, right? I mean, you've seen my work. So anyway, here we've got lemon yellow and I'm using that number two brush. Notice I've only been using the number eight and the number two brush. You'd be surprised at how thin you can paint stuff with that larger brush. But sometimes you really do need a smaller one. So just doing a very, very, you know, simple little wick here. I actually have space in between there and the candle, kind of drawing a little one. Don't want those to connect because then they'll bleed together. So, and I'm just gonna super quickly speed through this part because I wanna get to the wow part. I have some really cool tips and little things that I, for some mediums and other stuff that I love to use that really takes projects from, oh, that's cool to wow, that's really awesome. But look at that, it's so sweet and cool, right? Five candles, one for every 10,000 subscriber, Justine. This is, card is being shipped to you, and uh, I'm so excited for you. It's a huge milestone, 50,000 subscribers. You were there for me all the way in the beginning. I can only hope to finally get there one day. Speaking of, if you've never subscribed, what you waiting for? Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell too. Be sure to leave comments below. Remember, there's tons and tons of prizes. All the details are down in the description section below. So let's get to the good stuff. Okay, I know it looked like that Fantastic was white, but it was not. It was silver. These are Nouveau Embellishment Mousses. And if you have never played with these, they are very cool products. Now, I do recommend that you keep them nice and tightly closed. You may even want to get some press and seal to put over there to create an even better seal because they will dry out over time, over time. But these very pliable mousses, as you can see, that was Indian gold and this is pure platinum. And when that says pure platinum, man, they could not have picked a better name for that particular one. It is just a brilliant, brilliant name. You can see I have, you know, not a crazy amount down. You don't want to put your finger in them. You can leave oils behind, which will end up growing mold or things like that. So just use a tool. Those Nouveau spatulas are the perfect little tool. And use your finger to spread them. I find that that is the best way to spread them. You can use an ink sponge. You can use a spatula. You can use a paintbrush. You can use whatever you want. But I find you get the best application by using your finger. And it cleans up so super quick and easy with a baby wipe. I mean, it's really not that big a deal. But I am covering this. Now, I made the mistake of cutting out all my words first and then just put them right back in there probably be best to, you know, color uh, a piece of a section of paper and then die cut out. And plus, it, that's definitely better. And if you're doing it this way, you want to also remove your words before drying them because I dried them in place and then need to cut them out a second time. So learn from my mistake. Now, this last word, brilliant here, the bottom, I put the pure platinum on and then I put the Indian gold on the top. And oh my gosh, that one was so cool it, it was just so beautiful and they they blend so effortlessly together and there's over 25 colors of embellishment mousse or 24 something like that look at that it's like foiled paper yeah it's seriously if you've never tried these products you definitely want to try at least the silver and the gold to start or they have beautiful deep colors as well and you can do so much more than just you know create metallic you know die cut words you can do cool backgrounds. Look at that brilliant. Is that not cool? Just very effortless. And it's almost looks like a fo foiled gold silver word. And you know, you can't get a foil like that. Just gorgeous, just gorgeous. In real life, if you're looking at it, it looks like a metallic. So, and very, very cool. I think you'll really enjoy the product. Next up, just super quick, of course quick, because I sped it up, creating an embossed background. You know how to emboss. Just did a little bit of anti-static tool and going to do this in clear because I didn't want to take away from the rest of the card, but I needed a little something something in those 
uh, you know, exposed areas. So just a very, really great background stamp by Create a Smile, just simple circles, and it's a, a nice complement to the candles. It screams party, it screams, you know, it would work as a great birthday card, but in my case, it's a, you know, congratulatory card. And this was just a little too plain. We needed to jazz this up a little bit. There's that metallic silver, fantastic. So I grabbed some of the Quicksilver Glacier Paste by Nuvo. If you haven't tried the Glacier Paste, that's another one. I, I just did a video just recently on Glacier Paste and embossing mousses. This is basically like adding sparkly, uh, you know, silver leaf, or, you know, if you're using the gold, gold leaf to your product. To your project it's so cool and again you don't need much you know it's very easy to to work with super super pliable i just use my finger just to dab a little bit you can use a sponge you can use lots of different tools and i'm just going to edge the top and the bottom and what's really nice about this product is it is that little something that is that finishing touch and those type of products for me are completely priceless because a lot of times you have projects that just need that little something. I mean, look at that. It's literally as if I took real silver and just edged the project with it. And you can really get a lot of bang for your buck from those little tiny jars. Now this very last tip here, this is actually an awesome little stamp set. Uh, there's a couple of them from Unity Stamps and they have all these great little background borders. And they run the width of a regular A2 size card. So they're each about four and a quarter inch long. So basically I'm using my Misty to just move that down, line that pattern right back up. Just make sure that it's really, you know, in sync on the one side. So it's very easy to do. And then I'm creating these mini stripes and there's all these amazing patterns. I definitely have them linked in the description below along with all the other products. And look at that super cool pattern for my background which is, and I needed something else because my polka dots, as awesome as they are, I don't want anything to take away from that, but at the same time, I needed something else to just kick this project up to the next level. So I hope you really enjoyed learning all these different techniques. Here are some close-ups that really give you some of that insight into how awesome the metallics are. That was the mousse. And you can see how free and fun these watercolors are. Watercolors don't have to be complicated. They can be, but they don't have to be. Sometimes simple can really surprise you. And I know that this video is stripped down and way simple techniques. But if you want to learn more, I have more complex ones too. <laughs> I have a couple videos here that hopefully they will give you a little bit more inspiration and some more in-depth insight into what you can absolutely do with this medium. Or if you want even more real-time tutorials, check out my Patreon community as well. See you over in one of those videos.